IMO 2021 International Mathematical Olympiad problem number two. So let's see the problem the following from algebra show that the inequality this term is less than or equal this term holds for all the real numbers x1, x2 to xn. So here look. As I said before, one of the most important ideas for solving IMO problems and also we solve first problem of this exam with that idea is to consider small example of n. So, we first start considering the problem when n equals 1. So, let's see what we have now. x1 minus x1 is y is less than... Uh, square root of absolute value of x1 plus x1 is equivalent that 0 is less than or equal this term uh, we know that it's obvious so it was obvious so we need to check more small examples so we check when n equals 2 then we have x1 minus x2 absolute value square root of absolute value of x1 minus x2 and this term x2 minus x1 here and x1 minus x1 would be 0 x2 minus x2 would be 0 so we we've ignored them why it is less than or equal we want to prove this why it is less than or equal to square root of absolute value of x1 plus x2 plus here we had x1 plus x1 here we had x2 plus x2 so we factor 2 from that and it would be 2 times absolute value of x1, 2 times absolute value of x2, all of them inside the radical. Now, let's consider the cases that are useful. We say, okay, if x1, for example, because look, we have absolute value. So point 0 is important and we want to consider when at least one of them is 0 when both of them are greater than 0 when both of them are less than 0 when one of them is greater than 0 and the other one is less than 0 to consider this equality we change to what? case 1 at least one of them is 0 without loss of generality we consider that x2 equals 0 so it would be x1 x1 here we ignore x2 so 2 square root of absolute value of x1 y is less than 2 square root of absolute value of x1 plus this term and this term would be 0 and we can subtract this term from both sides then we, we would see that it is equivalent that 0 is less than or equal this term and like it is changed to the previous case when n equals 1 so uh, we would see that would be easy when one variable equals zero and now this is a sentence of the problem we consider case two if x1 and x2 both of them are positive without loss of generality we can consider x2 x1 greater than zero so we know that if we shift if we consider x2 minus x1 and x1 minus x1 then it would be zero and the left hand side won't change uh, and if we consider right hand side it would decrease why because look both of them are positive so we can write x1 plus x2 we can ignore absolute value and if we decrease x1 and x2 it would decrease it would decrease it would decrease so we need only to consider the case that x1 is 0 and x2 would change to x2 minus x1 and we proved it by case 1. So we will see that shift if we shift variables, for example, like minus x1 or x1 and x2 to change xi to xi plus alpha, it would be useful. So what we've considered until now, what we've concluded, what we've noticed until now, try to focus on the variables that are zero and also shifting variables means for example change xi to xi plus alpha and then the left hand side won't change if we prove that the right hand side 
would decrease and then uh, the minimum part is greater than the left hand side then the problem will be proved now we need to consider when x1 and x2 is are less than zero if we negate x1 and x2 it will, uh, the left hand side and also right hand side won't change and we can solve it again by case 2 because then minus x1 and minus x2 would be greater than zero if one of them is negative and one of them is positive without loss of generality we can consider that x1 is less than zero and x2 is greater than zero so again we want to shift and minimize the right hand side and we know that the left hand side won't change so the inequality the sense inequality is this we change xi to xi plus alpha we know that the left hand side doesn't change and we want to consider the right hand side we know that if alpha is a large number or is a large positive number or large negative number then means large negative number means for example minus k k is positive and k is a large positive number so minus k then you can easily see that right hand side would go to infinite so we can prove that the right hand side we can choose an alpha that right hand side is minimum there exists an alpha so we consider that alpha and without loss of generality we can consider we choose that alpha and here x1 and x2 are in the minimum uh, part or in the least part here so now we if x1 plus now we want to change to alpha we know this part is the minimum part x1 and x2 we choose here by shifting them or in general in general we don't consider this case we know that in general x1 for example and x2 are the minimum part the, the whole right hand side and then well, if x this part is not zero this part x1 x2 are not zero and also x1 plus x2 are not zero we can consider alpha that is less than minimum of x1 x2 and x1 plus x2 over 2 then we can consider alpha less than this and greater than zero and we can say these terms have the same sign and by Jens by Jensen's inequality you can say that uh, these if we add up these two things these two terms it would be less than four times because if you consider f of x square root of x then you can say this plus this is over 2 is less than uh, 2 times this and if we multiply both sides by 2 it will be 4 times this and since we know that these two things are not equal we can conclude it is strictly less than this it is also they have same sign with respect to this alpha it is less than this less than this so we know that this plus this is less than this so at least one of them is less than half of this so at mean at least one of them one of these row is less than the minimum thing and it would it is a contradiction because it was the minimum part and so we will see if we can consider alpha between zero and minimum of that and for uh, setting this alpha we need that x1 and x2 are not equal to 0 and x1 plus x2 are not equal to 0 then it's not equal to 0 then we can find alpha so we would see that if x1 equals 0 or x2 equals 0 then by case 1 the problem will be true if x1 plus x2 equals 0 we know the problem will be true and in if x1 and x2 is not plus x2 is not zero and both of them are not zero then we can reach contradiction now we want to generalize this idea we say okay consider that minimum of rh s is for example x1 to xk and we want to check we, we can shift all of them plus beta now case one suppose that there exists we want to generalize the idea that we've checked if there exists i that xi equals zero without loss of generality we can consider that xn equals 0 and now we can, we want to prove this the sentence of the problem is this we want to so we consider 
the indices from 1 to n minus 1, we write them, and if we consider xn, it would be xn uh, minus x1, it would be x, the absolute value of x1, 2 absolute value of xn minus 1, since xn equals 0, for the case that i equals n, and also we would consider the case that j equals n. Then again, we would write the same thing, so we would say it's twice all these terms. Similarly, we do this for the right-hand side. We know that this term equals this term, so if we uh, subtract both sides by this term, then we need to prove this term. And we know that this is a sentence of the problem for n minus 1, and if we use induction, we can prove this part. In case 2, so at first of the solution for your exam paper, you need to write, we solve it by induction, and we solve it for n1 and n2. So n equals now, n equals greater than equal 3, and in n1, we've, uh, in this case, we've solved the case n by n minus 1. And now, we want to like the small example, if there is this uh, i and j such that xi plus xj equals 0. If i equals j, then we know that xi equals 0, and by case 1, the problem will be true. If i is not equal to j without loss of generality, we can consider that xn minus 1 plus xn equals 0. Now, the sentence of the problem is this. Now, we separate the left hand side to two parts one part the indices from 1 to n minus 2 and the second part the indices that at least one of them is n minus 1 or n so it would change to let me place square root of xn minus 1 minus xi and xn minus xi if we uh, consider that one, for example, one in the index is n minus one or n, and we say twice because x n minus one and x n with the indices i between one and n minus two twice because i and j each of them can be n minus one plus the cases that both indices are between n and n minus one so plus twice because x we have xn minus xn minus 1 and xn minus 1 minus xn so we write twice the square root of this term and xn minus xn would be 0 and xn minus 1 minus xn minus 1 would be 0 so the left hand side would be something like this and also we do the same thing for the right hand side and we have these things like this and if we consider again we need to write the square root of xn minus 1 minus xi and the square root of xn plus xi plus. Now we consider that all the both indices between xn and xn minus 1. So we have, we can say n, n minus 1, n minus 1, n. Then we have this. We have n, n. So it would be this. And it would be this. n minus 1, n minus 1. It would be this. So we can say that it is less than this, less than or equal this by induction from n minus 2 so we prove the problem for the case 1 and for example 2 we prove that so we said n x greater than equal 3 so we won't have any problem we can use induction again by n minus 2 and we can say that if we prove it is not equivalent but if we prove this term all this term is less than or equal this term then the problem will be true and if we copy these two terms on the next page we need to prove these terms okay exactly this let me just place square root square root square root and we've copied this thing same things and we didn't place equivalent but if we prove this we can prove the sentence of the problem as you can see we know that xn plus xn minus 1 equals 0 so we can replace xn minus 1 with minus xn and it would be minus xn minus xi since we have absolute value so it, equ it is equal absolute value of xn plus xi so we can 
uh, subtract both sides by them and we can cancel them and also we do the same thing here replace x10 with minus x10 minus 1 and then we can cancel these two things and so is equivalent to prove that y2 times this term is less than or equal and we know that this is 0 so we ignore this plus square root of 2 times this plus this term we need to prove that and since xn minus plus xn minus 1 equals 0 we can replace xn minus 1 with minus xn so it would be 2 times absolute value of x and y is less than or equal and they, they would be equal 2 times square root of 2 times absolute value of x and y and we see that they are equal so we prove that these two terms are equal and then we can prove these terms so we proved for case 2 as well so in case 3 in case 1 was what one of them one of the variables at least one of them is zero for example x n in case two we said if we have x i and x j that their sum is zero then we prove this case so in this case we can say for all i and j between one and n x i plus x j is not equal to zero so for each case we can say x i plus x j is positive or negative so we can consider also that it's positive and less than minimum of x i plus x j over 2 and let me write absolute value and we can also change for a small example of n that we've checked that alpha is less than absolute value of them because maybe sometimes they are negative if we consider the minimum part here we consider that it is less than the absolute value of them. We know each of them are not zero, so absolute value of them is positive. So if alpha is less greater than zero, less than minimum of them for all ij between one and n, we can conclude that oh, this and this and this has have the same sign. So you can use instance inequality, and we know they are not equal, so it's strictly greater than that. And we know that right hand side of x1 to xn is greater. If you add up all things, then it will be greater that right hand side of x1, xi minus alpha for all i between 1 and n. And also, this is the plus alpha for all variables over 2. And this was the minimum part, but we can say at least one of them is less than this part, and it is a contradiction. So, case 3 would reach the contradiction. And we proved the problem for all cases.